welcome to another trip report as I'm walking through one of the endless tunnels in Frankfurt Airport, which uh, you can kind of see. So today's gonna be a special one. We're gonna be flying the uh, 747-800 all the way from Frankfurt to Houston. So it's gonna be a long flight, but it's gonna be on the 747-8, which isn't a plane you see, uh, see really a lot of anymore. They stopped making them and Lufthansa is one of the few that still flies them. So it's gonna be a pretty unique experience and it's gonna be a fun one and I'm gonna be here to capture all of it. So uh, stay tuned and uh, let's get this thing rolling. Okay, well, just getting over here to the uh, Z Gates from, well, wherever the hell it was we landed. <sighs> Passport control desk, two elevators, a couple escalators. I think I walked through a damn janitor's broom closet at some point to get over here, but we'll say Frankfurt Airport's a great place to go if you're looking to get your steps in, because, Christ, that's a walk. But, gonna get over to Z25 and uh, also maybe grab some food and something to drink before we. Uh, Go ahead and take off here. Okay, looking here at the ticket, uh, we're on Lufthansa Flight 440 on 12th of September. We're in Group 5 boarding at uh, about 9.15 or so. And we're gonna be in seat 45J, which will be if you're facing the front of the plane on the right. So the main things we're gonna evaluate here is the seat comfort of the plane. Obviously, I'm gonna be sitting there a while. The entertainment system and the uh, selection there, the overall food and drink that we are going to be being served, not only just like the drink, but like the service. And finally, the uh, overall customer service, the flight attendants, you know, how attentive, how visual they are, just, you know, general friendliness that you expect from being in an airplane even though we are an economy class so the bar there isn't you know too high there's no unrealistic no unrealistic expectations there that you know you're gonna be getting five five star class service so you know it kind of is what it is and just something to uh, evaluate the last time i flew on the Tonson was about five years ago so this is going to kind of be uh be a comparison to that and just kind of see how things have either gotten better or worse Okay, so looking around the seat here, we've got your basic airplane pillow and your airplane blanket, which, to be honest, I didn't really use a lot of. I kind of bring my own pillows for that. And looking overall at the seat, the, the controls here, you can see the little remotes there and the armrest, like it's, you know, 2004 again. And uh, you can see a little bit of the foot space there. Um, as you can see, you've got these big IFE boxes down there. So I'm flipping through the uh, propaganda. Nice little place to hold your drink there and your tray table now this seat is one that i've not seen really um, in quite a while it's actually kind of dated overall but uh yeah it's there um a little two folding tray in this uh system here which i haven't once again seen in years so it's a little dated and it's also as i'll get into it a little bit later slow as all get out you also have to tap pretty hard on it to get it to activate and you give the person in front of you a free back massage but it is a German airline, you never know what people are into, so, you know, you just gotta kinda live with it, and I'll go into that in a little bit more depth later as I keep fooling around with it. Still no idea what that is. Somebody said it was like a place to put a coat hanger or something, I don't know. And a little bit of space off there to your right, which is critical, because this is where the row where you, your three 747 seats go to two, so in economy, you get a little bit extra room to either store stuff or kinda split your feet out, and that is a view of the windows there. You get like a you know window and a half there, so. Obviously a little bit of extra room and value there because this foot situation for some people might not be wide enough. Or you get a little bit of extra knee room there. That's also probably not the most comfortable thing to do, but there's a little bit of extra space there either for your knees or to kind of shift your feet over there when you when you have that little extra value there. And I'm still playing around with the screen. This thing is it's responding slower than the coma patient. So as you can see, um, you know, it is what it is. You get a little bit extra space, but the uh, entertainment on this on this flight is Definitely something that needed to be updated quite a few years ago. I'm just going to shove the bag there and try to continue on with my day. And then for your plug-ins, you have this under this under the armrest of your uh, of your chair there, which is an awkward location. As you can see, a little two-holer 1990s, uh, you know, plug-in for your earphones. So it's a little bit of an awkward location, um, but it works. The plug, I can at least say that the plug on the chair did work. And I'm going back to this little remote control thingy, which is. Once again, not, not something I've really seen a lot of um, in quite a few years, but it exists. It's a nice little shot of the 
lamps there should you need them. And a nice shot of the back of the seat next to me. Just uh, trying to navigate through this thing. This thing does not respond very well. You have to tap the heck out of this thing to get it to work. Uh, as you'll see, there's quite a bit of variety, but my goodness, you have to have some patience to be able to work with this thing, and I'll, I'll get into that later. And this is the uh, earphones they head out before the uh, flight. Um, they're designed to work with the two-hole prong thing there, so um, I don't actually use them. I just use my normal earbuds, and they work just fine for this. Very soon after you take off, they give you drink service and a little bit of the uh, mix there. So I had a little bit of red wine since it's going to be a long flight and I'll need it. And uh, a little bit of bag of crackers there to kind of just munch on a bit while you're waiting for the uh, dinner service to begin. And this is kind of the back shot of the very back of the plane. Um, you can see I'm in the very last sort of section there, which isn't bad. Like I said, there's a little bit of value there with the extra space you'll get. And we're going to go ahead and check out the uh, bathroom here early in the flight while it's still kind of nice and clean. You know, not exactly the most horrible place you're ever going to see. So, pretty typical door handle there. Um, normal signs, normal ceiling. I guess that's the smoke detector or something. I don't know. Uh, looking around here, you've got your water, which the water was nice and warm when you press the warm button. A little bit of soap there, towel so everybody can stay nice and clean. A little bit of toilet paper there. And your normal trash can and window setting. Um, overall, here things are pretty standard. You've got your toilet there, which. Uh, of course, it looks like most normal airline toilets. But overall, even uh, this early in the flight, the bathroom is clean as it should be. If it wasn't, that would probably be a little bit of a concern. So just kind of scanning around. There's some mood lighting here, but here's kind of a cool trick. When you push the button here, the seat snaps down and the toilet flushes with the lid closed. So that, that was kind of pretty, pretty cool trick. And this is the uh, first meal you get, which is um, some sort of barbecue. I think it was barbecue chicken or something, I don't know. You can see a little bit of uh, dessert there, coleslaw piece of bread and uh, overall as I can as far as things go that was pretty good and there you can see it's got broccoli um, which who puts broccoli on a dish on a plane but still pretty cool and this is over the islands of Scotland or Ireland I think it's Scotland as you can kind of see our flight path there that we're passing over so this is probably about an hour and 30 minutes into the flight and this is the flight screen information screens that you can see when you kind of play around with the entertainment system enough. After dinner, they came by, um, got some tea there with the uh, after the meal, and uh, yeah, a little bit of uh, Coke as well. So just kind of sitting here enjoying things. And they also come by afterwards and give you an entire bottle of water. Um, this is just quite, kind of quickly after the meal to keep you hydrated. Now getting into the entertainment system, I'm once again kind of battling this thing. As you can see, you're going to get the orange wheel of death here a lot as we're kind of trying to cycle through and show you these options. It's definitely not the most responsive system. 
Um, like I said, you have to press pretty hard and poke into your seat, and there's absolutely no way the person in front of you isn't feeling that. So if you're poking it a lot like I am trying to figure it out or just trying to be patient, get things to move, yeah, it gets kind of annoying, and then your index finger gets tired, and then, you know, things just kind of go downhill. Um, there was a lot of great variety there, but my goodness, it took you so long to cycle through and find it. Um, and, you, you know, you've got your pretty typical things, like you can pair your earbuds, you've got games, you've got the flight cameras, which I'm always interested in because I always think those are cool. Um, I'm kind of a nutcase like that. You got That's looking directly down to some wonderful clouds, and I'm just kind of playing around here trying to get the nose camera, which which is a thing that also exists. But overall, that's, that's a system. As you can see here, we're most of the way through the flight here heading up over Canada. And this is always kind of the nice scenic part. You know, not a lot of people see this. And when you're off Canada and kind of flying through areas where nobody is, you get some pretty nice and beautiful landscapes like that. And about an hour and a half before your flight lands, you're gonna get some, another meal tray. In between this, the flight attendants disappeared, but oh well. Um, so you got some pudding, Kit Kat bar, bread, and then what was some couscous. And in between this meal and, all, and the previous meal you get out there, you know, like I said, the service is pretty much non-existent. But overall, this meal was pretty good. Um, I'm not a big couscous fan, but it was hot and pleasant. And this is a little science trick here. If you ever have a bottle of water and it's empty, just close it at altitude and see what it looks like when the plane lands. And we'll get back to that one after we land. Okay, so kind of catching my thoughts on everything while I'm walking to my gate in Houston. Overall, as far as the flight goes, starting off with it, as far as the seat goes, not too bad. I really love the headrest they had there. Um, it's a lot better. They were kind of shorter, so it's better than kind of the longer ones you sometimes get on American domestic flights. But uh, definitely love the headrest there. Seat was okay. Of course, I always bring a little few extra pillows. As far as the meal goes, it was uh, you know pretty on par for airline food. Nothing really stood out. Did love the little Kit Kat bars they had. Drink service was infrequent, but they did hand out water bottles at least once, so that was nice. Um, overall, it's not quite the Lufthansa I remember from even a few years ago. You can kind of tell the customer service kind of dipped off. Flight attendants pretty much disappeared after like the first hour and a half of the flight, and you didn't see them until about an hour before the plane landed. Must be a nice job to have. So, yeah, customer service was just kind of meh. Um, did enjoy the seat though, it was great to have that little extra knee room there when the seats go from three to two. So maybe if you get a row back, that's probably about the best economy seat because of the extra leg room you're going to get off to your right there. Overall, it was a solid but not outstanding flight. 
it just kind of was what it was. I mean, customer service was kind of lacking. The meal was okay. Everything was kind of okay. Not great, not terrible. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what Lufthansa was. I just remember it being a lot better. Um, of course, you know, my frame of reference is like five years ago, 10 years ago, but it just used to be so much better. And now it just kind of is what it is. So that is everything that I've got. And I will see you all later.